Okay, so today what I want to talk about is a um, conflict uh, resolution for kids. Um, so those of you who join um, later, you can um, pick up uh, on, on what I've said. Um, so today I wanted to talk about conflict resolution because of something that happened at home and um, with my with my kids. Um, I've actually been wanting to talk about conflict resolution for a while, but I've, I've got sidetracked with other um, topics. But I think I think this is the right time to talk about conflict resolution because of the fact that I've got an example. Um, remember, I said that as parents, we need to uh, take cognizance of all the learning moments. Every every bit of time we spend with our kids is a, is a, is a learning moment, and it's a time where we, as a parent, can actually pick up on. On things from our kids, and also then it impacts and imparts um, knowledge uh, to our kids and mold the way they they're developing. So, um, what I'm going to do today is to share one of the learning moments that actually just happened about 10, 15 minutes ago. Um, so essentially, what happened was that they were watching um, YouTube, um, they were watching YouTube videos all day, um, and uh, in the evening, around like five something, six, I told them, but look. I don't understand why they spent near on ten hours just watching, you know, the YouTube videos and going to eat and then coming back to watch YouTube videos. Um, and that I want them to understand that the access that they have to knowledge wasn't the level of access that I, I had to knowledge when I was growing up. I mean, they have Netflix, they have the internet. They have a laptop, flat screen TV. They have um, smart boards at school, etc. They have Google. So I'm telling them the, the, they've got a lot of access to a lot of information. So rather than sitting down and watching YouTube videos, they could have actually varied what they're doing and watching other other things. You know, they could have just Googled what our kids like in Japan, for example, and then just sit down and, and learn something cultural about Japanese kids. Um, and there's something I'll talk about um, in a separate video, uh, which is uh, to, to deal with technology and um, the availability of information and data that there is out there and how to actually help our kids access and navigate all this thing. That's I appreciate uh, the power that they have, you know, um, right before them. For, for, for some of us, we didn't have that. I mean, we had chalkboards when we were growing up. We didn't have whiteboards. Um, so we essentially just learn what the teacher gave us. Whereas now the teacher gives them knowledge, but they can then Google, uh, go online, was in the school setting and find out about, let's say, the environment in Japan or find out about environmental issues in China or use uh, Google Maps or NASA videos and see what's happening in Antarctica. We didn't have that when we were growing up. So our kids have got a lot of um, access to a lot of uh, knowledge. Uh, and information because of technology so it's something i'll speak about separately but anyway so i was just trying to let them understand that look because you've got access to all of this you need to try and really uh, let that fire up your, your curiosity and inquisit the nest to find uh, more information about cultures and different things that are happening uh, around the world maybe things that you like yeah, for example my kids do dancing i see that viv is on uh, who's the the owner of the dance school um they do dancing, you know. So I'll tell them, why don't you even have Googled different dance types around the world and just sort of looked at that and, you know, you start to appreciate cultures and how people move. And even then start to connect and see that, oh, okay, the, the dances in Russia are similar to the dances in this particular dance I've been doing in um, in, in Ghana, etc. you know. We live in a global world. Anyway, so I told them, look, switch off the TV, <laughs> go, go and take a shower, put on your pajamas and uh, let's do something else. So after they taken the shower, put on the pajamas, they came back all grumpy. Um, but my youngest one was very grumpy anyway. He's, 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 he's like, and they were having an argument. So I said, why are you guys having an argument? And then the, the oldest one said, well, because um, my papa, the youngest one is grumpy and I'm trying to explain something to her and she doesn't want to listen. So I said to uh, her, okay, what, but why is she grumpy? Then she said, oh, well, she's grumpy because you, um, dad, uh, hi, hi, Joe. <laughs> yeah, greetings to you as well, the family. 
she said, uh, because of what you, you said that about closing turning over YouTube, um, she got upset about it because she was enjoying the YouTube. So I said, okay. So she's you think she's jumpy because she was enjoying the YouTube, and I said that she stopped. I said you should stop and then my oldest said yeah yeah that's why so i then asked my youngest so why actually are you grumpy and then she gave a totally different story she said well it's because um when i was going to take the shower i have this thing this rule with my colleague that mommy said that um whoever touches the the bath first um has to have the opportunity to um, use it first but when i when i when i touched the bath first and i went in to use it then my colleague opened the door and came in and then wanted to jump in the bath and I didn't like that. So I then said, okay, so my colleague, you think she's grumpy because of one thing and she thinks that she's telling that she's grumpy because of something totally different. So it turned into a little bit of a, uh, an argument back and forth. And then my colleague said, well, um, I, I don't think that she should be grumpy if I jump in because she does it to me as well. So I thought I'd do it to her as well. Um, so the, having this back and forth, you know, argument so then so they said uh, but kids i mean the house has three three uh, washrooms bathrooms so if you're arguing about one uh, washroom for me i i, I, I don't understand it one of you could have just used the other washroom and then um they looked at me and said yeah yeah but you know there's this rule and um one person was breaking the rule and then that person said well i was breaking the rule because you always break the rule so i'm also going to break the rule so then I thought, okay, this is a bit of conflict going on here. Let's let's see how this uh, how, how this how this develops because it's a learning moment, you know. Let's see how uh, we can get some emotional intelligence uh, tutorials in there and practice in there and negotiation uh, practice in there and teach them how to be uh, patient with each other. A bit of listening, active listening, practice in there. So all of a sudden, this little uh, argument has turned into a learning moment where you can introduce a whole lot of uh, things that will help their, um, their, their, their development. So um, I said, right, so you're basically having a discussion and one person has a different view about the whole scenario from the other person. And because of your conflicting views, uh, you're having a, an argument. But what actually is the objective of the argument? And then um, the order said, well, the objective is, is, is to try and sort out this whole issue with um, the, the who enters the bath uh, first. So I said, yeah, so you've, you've agreed a rule about the bath and um, you and Napali have decided that you're going to break the rule. And then she said, yeah, well, but um, Rebecca also does it. So I said, yeah, if Rebecca does it, Rebecca does it and you allowed her to do it. So in her mind, um, she can keep doing it because you allowed her to push that boundary you know the fact that you've allowed her to push that boundary doesn't mean therefore that when it's your turn you can also push that boundary if you know that there are rules that you have to follow you know the fact that you allow someone to do it doesn't mean therefore that you should also do it so she just all looked at me and said well yeah but it's not fair because uh, she's bullying me then i said well how's she bullying you you're the oldest you know you're, you're the oldest you set the rules between yourselves and the mom if you think um, someone is breaking the rules and it's not fair. Who do you need to go to? And she said, well, we need to go to mom. I said, why? Because mom set the rules. So I said, okay, great. So you're starting to understand um, what what rules are and, and the fact that certain people will push the boundaries when it comes to rules. And if you allow those boundaries to, 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 to be pushed, it now becomes the norm. And when it becomes the norm, you can't complain when the person keeps doing what they now consider to be the norm because they've encouraged it to be the norm. You know, so we had a little discussion um, around that. And then um, all of a sudden, um, she said, oh, okay, well, uh, fine. And then she stormed off into um, the study room and then she came back with a big sheet of, <laughs> a big cardboard sheet, I think about an A0 sheet, big cardboard sheet. And then she, she, she started scribbling stuff on it. So I was like, What's going on? Yes, I'm looking at her, and then um, she said, "Okay, now Papa, we need to set rules." So she scribbled the rule, rule number one. We have to put this in writing now because um, we obviously uh, verbally can't uh, uh, agree what the rules are. Um, so let's let's reset the rules again and agree it to writing. So she wrote, she wrote the rules in writing. <laughs> 
<laughs> and then a younger sister said, well, I need to have a look and check that the rules are actually in my favor because, uh, you know, you may write something that I don't agree. So they agreed the wording of the rules to do with the bath <laughs> in, 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 in writing. And then um, they said, uh, you know what, we need to develop further rules then because um, I realized that you've been taking my storybooks without asking me. So let's put that rule down. So she put that rule down. And then my papa said, well, okay, you also keep entering my bedroom without knocking. So, you know, let's put that rule down. So she put that, before I realized these kids have done a whole sheet of rules where they're, they're, setting, they're setting guidelines for their behavior. I just I just sat there watching this shake my head going, yeah, 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 yeah. We are we are doing something right then. Anyway, so they set all these rules. And then they went over the wedding and we're casting wedding out and a green wedding and and, and whatnot. I was just sort of watching them, you know. Um the youngest one is 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 um uh, very uh, strong headed, yeah, very, very, very strong minded. So obviously she was trying to push and um, a bit aggressive in what she wanted and you can see the negotiations going back and forth and their different temperaments and uh, the different emotions and the way they deal with emotions uh, the oldest one is a bit more laid back and, and, and soft uh, in manner the youngest one is more aggressive so it was interesting watching them going back and forth uh, and dealing with each other anyway so they finished setting all these rules <laughs> and then they, they said okay now that we've set the uh, the rules um we need to look at uh, punishments because if 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 we set if we set the uh, yeah Charlie, Joe rules to occupy the shower serious <laughs> if we set the rules and you break the rules then the rules don't really make any sense so we need to we need to have some sort of a, a punishment where if you break the rule then you, you, you do a punishment so um the oldest one then gave a punishment no no I think the youngest one gave a punishment but the punishment for her rule was um wasn't a helpful punishment. It was more sort of you've done something bad. I'm gonna inflict pain on you, kind of a punishment. So I then I then said, um, uh, Rebecca, that your punishment, your punishment. Let's have a look at the punishment. Um, you can do the punishment in such a way that the punishment actually benefits um, you and maybe benefits the whole house, you know, and then also then also benefits uh, your sister. So what type of punishment uh, could you choose for her breaking one of your rules? And then she said, well, if she enters my room for example, without knocking, maybe she could fold all the clothes, all my clothes, and then load the basket into my drawer. And then I said, yeah, huh, no, that's a good punishment. So I then said, um, actually, what you've done is actually do a thing um, that uh, um, um, adults do, which is called community service. Sometimes when the government uh, wants to punish um, people who have done something wrong, instead of throwing them into a prison, they let them do community service. So then the whole society or an area benefits from their punishment. They may ask them to go and clean an area or weed an area or clear out a gutter of an area or something. So the whole the whole community benefits from the punishment rather than the punishment being uh, something which is negative and only uh, uh, fixated on that particular individual. You know, the punishment actually then uh disseminates and, and, and also touches other, other other people in a positive way so i said oh you've done very well actually thinking about that type of um that type of of of, of, um, of punishment um so you know then uh, her older sister also came up with her punishment so they went back and forth you know coming up with punishments that were uh, house friendly that would help the, the the house and then when they then um finished my greed up on all of that, they then asked me to come and witness. <laughs> These kids are crazy, man. They asked me to come and witness <laughs> the uh, the agreement and the punishments. So I came, and then they said, "Oh, you have to sign it." So I said, "When you sign it, said, oh, you have to sign." So I had to, I had to sign. They put a, a little bit in the corner, of witness. So I had to put my name there, sign it, and then put the date there. <laughs> and then they said, "Okay, now that you witnessed it, any time that there's a conflict." This particular conflict always happens, and um, the disciplinary uh, code gets implemented. And someone decides to step outside the disciplinary code, we will come to you for um, adjudication. Well, they need the word adjudication, but that's essentially what they're the 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 pointing at. We'll come to you for you to, you know, sort it out. So I said, okay, what you're doing is doing a thing called um, escalation, which is if you can't sort something out within yourself where you try to regulate um, 
your behaviors yourselves. Um, you then um, ask someone who's got more power and authority to come in and try and help both of you um, sort the issue out. And so I said, okay, that's very good. So I said, oh, you, you, you kids, you've done, you've done very well because you've actually gone through um, a whole um, scenario of conflict resolution where you've, 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 you've had to, you know, do a little bit of emotional intelligence. You've had to do a little bit of critical thinking. You've had to do a bit of problem solving. Um, you've had to do a bit of negotiation. You've had to um, come to a compromise, have a win-win situation. You had to do active listening to understand what uh, each other was saying and where they were coming from. Um, and then you've come to some sort of uh, solution. You've brought in a fair party to be part of that solution just in case. Uh, the solution um, um, doesn't get uh, meted out and you need extra help. So I said, oh, you've done, you've done very well. And like, this is exactly what you'll be doing actually when you're older. It's the same thing. And the more you practice this when you're younger, the better it becomes when you're older. Because then when you become older and you're working and you have conflict in the office, you don't, you know, start backstabbing people in the office and kissing your boss's ass to uh, uh, someone else's detriment or um, threatening people or becoming abusive or bullying, etc. So um, I just thought I'd um, I'd, I'd, I'd share this uh, because it's 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 interesting to see um, the children actually utilizing some of the the things that we've been um, drilling them and teaching and teaching them. And that I've spoken about actually on on some of my previous uh, Facebook um, chats. It was interest, interesting to see all these things uh, coming together. Um, so now that I'm giving you the practical scenario, I'll just give you a bit of theory then on, on conflict resolution, so I sort of tie it into into what was happening. So the thing with conflict resolution is that it's it's it always arises because of um, misunderstanding, um, and we can see from the two kids that they were interpreting what was going on in their own different ways. So whereas one child was thinking, the other child was grumpy because of of me telling them to stop watching YouTube, the one who was grumpy was actually grumpy because she she had, she thought her sister had done something that annoyed her and that broke a certain rule that they agreed on mutually with their uh, with their mother. So you can see that a conflict uh, comes about because you've got two different people who process things uh, differently, differently in their. I'm, I'm doing a video that process things differently in their in their their minds. I'll, I'll come on up for Process things differently, differently in there. Close the door, please. Close the door, please. Process things um, differently um, in their minds, you know. And there's nothing wrong with how people process things in their minds. What is wrong is not being able to understand and actively listening and um, uh, uh, counter compromise and then help the other person to also see where you're coming from. That's where the problem comes from, and that's where the conflict uh, comes from. And so then, when you've got this uh, conflict, then when you then introduce um, emotions and the temperaments of individuals uh, the conflict can then um, escalate or de-escalate de you know because if the person can't control their emotions and the anger comes in and frustration comes in and uh, loss of patience comes in it can totally then start to escalate the, um, the conflict um, so the emotional intelligence part obviously is very important as well as the active listening part to be able to understand where both parties are, are coming from Right. So, so in terms of in terms of the um, in terms of the conflict, then uh, now that we understand what uh, conflict is and the fact that the emotional part of it actually takes the conflict to a different um, level, or can actually reduce the conflict, um, it's important then to understand how to then manage um, that conflict. Okay. So the first part then is the understanding part because the first part of conflict when you engage is you talking the other person listening that's how the conflict um, starts um, when I say listening I'm, um, those who have watched my, my active listening video it's not just about the ear and um, when we listen we listen with 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 our five senses so conflict can be the person pushing you and that's you listening so listening is just perception of uh, someone else's um, uh, stimulus so the stimulus could be the sound the person talking you listening and getting pissed off or the person pushing you and you feeling it and getting pissed off. Um, or the person looking at you in a funny way and you sensing it and getting pissed off or frustrated. So the active listening is more about how you perceive um, the stimulus from the, 
the third uh, person. Okay, so understanding takes a lot of uh, active listening. So the moment the conflict engages, the active listening needs to come in. Because what you need to then do is to try and perceive what is happening and then try and actually try and see whether what is happening um, is, is, is reasonable or not. Um, and whether it's something which puts you into danger or not, so therefore you flee rather than trying to engage. Or there's something where you can come to some sort of understanding and then um, talk to the person, um, reason with the person, um, to try and come to some sort of compromise. Um, so then, by you doing that, then what you're then trying to do is you're trying to avoid the situation from becoming worse. So where the situation, the conflict is, is a danger to yourself, a danger to the person, the way you, you, you prevent the situation from becoming worse once you've understood the situation through active listening is either to get out of the, 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 the situation that you're in because it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a dangerous situation for both you and the person who's, who's um, the stimulus or to uh, engage the person um, to try and um, calm the situation down. So again, when you then want to start to engage the person you then go back to the active listening part again because you engaging them is you trying to get them to actively listen to your side of the story okay so again it could be touch so with some children for example who are hyperactive uh, who will have hyperactive disorder um, issues a lot of touching and hugging um, calms them down because that's the stimulus that they get which then starts to de-escalate the situation uh, with them um, talking to the child calms them can calm them down um, so you've got you've got different ways in which you can actually de-escalate the situation by using um, your five senses and, and the active uh, listening part. And then that's when also then emotional intelligence starts to then um, kick in because you're then trying to help them to uh, reason, uh, to th critically think through what's happening and to put their emotions to one side and actually um, use their emotions to actually solve the situation rather than use their emotion to escalate the um, situation. So once you've done that understanding and then you've done the trying to um, de-escalate or avoid making the situation worse, then you can then move um, on from that to uh, working together to actually try and then resolve um, what the situation is, which is what um, they then did by starting all this, signing the agreements and, and negotiations and and going back and forth and wedding and all whatever they did, like a bunch of uh, lawyers. Um, Okay, so then it comes to the working together. And now the working together then takes a lot of critical thinking and even more greater uh, emotional uh, intelligence. Okay, and a lot of negotiation and going back and forth and compromise, a lot of patience, uh, um, etc. And then once you then get to a point where you now see that you're working together, you can then start proffering the solutions that you need um, to actually resolve the conflict and, and, and get a what we call a win-win situation. So that's what they... The kids were doing so they they they, they saw that look even though there was one uh, uh, situation that um, got the conflict up there were actually a whole lot of underlying situations so they had about four or five other situations that had been occurring you see um so just this one uh conflict situation once they did the whole understand it um de-escalate it so it doesn't get the situation worse um start to actually start uh, engaging each other to find a solution it then went on to okay we found the solution to this problem but look we've actually got four or five other problems as well which are around the same thing of you overstepping your boundary into my space and that upsetting me you know? so they when you, when you follow this type of conflict resolution, you end up not just resolving one thing, you end up resolving a whole lot of um, other things, you know, because usually the conflict, um, if you're a normal person, should occur if your buttons have been pushed more than once, okay? So obviously with them, they've pushed each other's buttons four times. And this fifth time was the um, <laughs> was, was the, um, the, the, the the breaking point where they thought, oh, I said, we've had enough of each other, let's, let's have a go at, at, at each other. Um, so through this one uh, fifth conflict, we're able to actually resolve and come to some sort of agreement about resolving the other four uh, conflicts and find some solutions to the other four uh, conflicts.
So these are the kind of steps that I think uh, we as parents need to take um, our kids uh, through when it comes to uh, conflict and resolution. Okay, so the fact that everyone needs to understand each other. Okay, when an argument or conflict starts, you need to put teach the kids to put themselves in the other person's shoes um, and actively listen. Um, understand that if the conflict is too dangerous, they need to get out of there and move. If the conflict isn't dangerous and they can engage, they need to be bold enough to actually um, engage. Um, you know, blessed are the peacemakers and all that kind of stuff. And then the fact that once they get that understanding going and the dialogue starts going, um, they move on to the stage of not actually making the situation worse. So that then goes to the emotional intelligence where you're trying to now regulate the emotions and the anger and the frustration. You're trying to bring it down to a level where the brain can actually critically think and not let the emotions overtake the brain from actually critically think. Then once you then start doing that, then you can start working together. You know, because you've now come to some sort of uh, understanding, um, you've lowered your, your, your emotional uh, um, levels to a point where your brain can now engage and can critically think. You can now start working together and start you know, offering uh, ideas and situations and being bold enough to actually say, actually, you did this and this hurt me. I did that, sorry, that hurt you, etc. And then you can then move on to uh, finding um, um, solutions. <laughs> my, kid, my, my daughter just crawled in. I've, I've seen you, by the way. <laughs> um, you can then you can then move then to um, finding um, solutions um, to the to the um, to the problems. Um, and in doing that, the solutions to the problems could actually end up not being a solution just to one problem, but in their case, a solution to three, four, five um, problems that were we're brewing up and what I've found interesting about this is that um, if you've got kids like, like this who are having these kind of issues I mean they they may be minor issues okay you walked into my bedroom and you didn't knock you know you took my uh, my dress stop it you took my dress um, and you didn't ask um, um, you put on my shoes that didn't ask they may be petty issues but I think that these issues keep brewing and brewing and brewing and then you end up having kids who are in their teens who actually hate each other for no reason and you're the parent and you're like i don't understand why my daughter hates my other daughter your sisters why are you getting along with each other but the fact of the matter is they've actually been having all these issues that they've not been able to deal with and and and, and manage through you know and 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 the, the 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 anger has been brewing and then the anger becomes resentment and then all of a sudden it turns into um them thinking you know one one, one parent loves the other parent more than them because they see um, the parents siding with the other parent, so with the other child more, maybe because they're the youngest kid, or maybe because they're the firstborn, or something like that. You know, so all of a sudden it escalates into something which could have been nipped in the bud if we as parents had actually taught our kids um, how to uh, go through managing conflict and managing their emotions and critically thinking and actively listening and all these other 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 things that we we we, we take for granted. Um, so yeah, so I think I think um, it's important that we actually um, pick these learning moments and and, and help our, work, help our kids to work through these uh, these um, these learning moments. Uh, the conflict resolution one was for me today was a powerful it was a powerful uh, powerful one um, because if you manage to do that, then when the kids are older, they can actually they they're more they're more mature. They can actually you know bond properly have proper relationships with people because they understand that conflict is just a part of life and they understand that when it happens you know we can grow together through that conflict um, um, and, and, and become become better people rather than become resentful of each other and hating each other and you know, favoritism coming in and bullying coming in and all that kind of stuff so yeah so this is what um, I wanted to share with, with, with everyone today it's a short 30 minute um, video on how um, as parents we can we can teach our kids uh, to resolve conflicts one thing I, I strongly recommend as parents is do not tell your kids to stop fighting whatever you do if your kids are fighting don't go oh stop fighting I've said it before in my first uh, video that I did that most often the mistakes that I've realized that we make as parents and I used to make those mistakes I still make those mistakes every now and again is that we make decisions based on what's good for for us as parents so if the kids are throwing tantrums 
because we become emotionally stressed ourselves, we made a decision to shut them down because it then calms our stress levels down. You understand? So it doesn't actually resolve um, the kids' issues or help them to actually think through their issues. You know, all it does is it pushes their issue temporarily aside in order for us to have our peace of mind. <laughs> you know, the usual oh, no, no, go away, go away kind of thing, or you know, go and watch a cartoon or stop fighting. Why are you too fighting your brothers and sisters? You know, you sort of bully them um, to stop. And what they're doing when really what they're actually doing is actually developing that's all they're doing them having a fight them having an argument them having a bit of conflict um them making a mistake is, is development what they need us to do as parents is, is to actually take them through um that development and help them uh, to actually work their, their way through those uh, scenarios in, in the correct in the correct manner so that their brains um neurons link properly the patterns form properly so that their emotions are, are, are kept in check, so they know what what the emotions are actually there for. You know, so uh, it's it's important that I I stress that as parents, let us stop making decisions and and, and, and raising our kids in a, in a way which actually benefits us and not our kids. Um, you know, let's stop pushing um, the, the the opportunities that we have uh, to teach them. You know, the learning moments to one side because we want our peace of mind because we've had a stressful day at work and we've come home and we're tired and you know you kids are worrying us and blah 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 no 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 let's 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 not do that you know if they'll fight let them fight but teach them how to fight you know and how to how to resolve um, um the issues after the fighting and how to deal with the emotions during and after the fighting and how to come back and make up after the fighting you know but let's not say no stop fighting it doesn't it doesn't help um, the kids to um, to mature emotionally and build build proper um, relationships and, and, and think uh, critically about, about about situations that they'll find themselves in when they're when they're older be it at work or in the halls of in the halls of, um, of, of power where they have to make key decisions that affect millions of people then all of a sudden you know they can't control their emotions they can't control what they say and they start behaving like um, neurotic um, psychopaths um, and narcissists um, so yeah, so thanks, thanks a lot, those of you who who joined uh, me for for the 30, 32, 33 minutes that I've been speaking. I hope um, I made sense uh, what I shared. Um, please feel free to um, share uh, the Facebook video. I'll be posting onto YouTube as well. My brothers pestered me so much to do a YouTube channel, so I've done a YouTube channel now. So I'll, I'll post it to YouTube. And you can also share it from YouTube. Uh, as well and like it and take the notification bell and all those other things that youtube people do um, i couldn't care less about to be fair but um, <laughs> john john my brother said i should go and do youtube so I've, I've been posting the stuff onto youtube so let's yeah so let, let, let's 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 keep parenting and um, for me parenting is the greatest job that we have um, in the world we do parenting right we'll have a better society we'll have better presidents we'll have better mps better dcs better black star coaches <laughs> shout out to our crazy up here um etc so yeah let's let's take our parenting seriously and, and nurture nurture our kids otherwise um the environment would nature them for us thank you and have a good weekend bye